I ask you to turn to Psalm 118. This Psalm 118, verse 24, is probably a verse you're familiar with. We, we often sing it. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to turn there because we're going to look at the whole chapter. I'm not just going to look at that, that verse. What a blessing. This is the day. And it made me think of the beginning of a, of a year, of the year. That word day doesn't just mean 24 hours. It means this is the time. Folks, this is the time. If we're going to do anything for God, it's going to be now. <laughs> we need to do it this year. Uh, we can't wait. We can't say, oh, let's see. 2024, maybe I'll do something. We don't know that we have 2024. But so far, we've got 2020. It's a real balanced year, isn't it? That, uh, that sounds like a good theme to me. We need to have Acts 2020 vision. Get out and, and reach people for Christ. You can look it up if you don't know what that verse says. We're starting a new year. This is the year. Yeah, you've been wanting to win somebody to Christ. This is the year. How many would like to win somebody to Christ this year? Well, I would. I'd love to, to show somebody how to get saved and have them say, yeah, I want to do that. Um, how many have been wanting to read your Bible or maybe even read your Bible through? And this would be the year for it, folks. Start now. Um, for some, there's relationships that, that need to be made right. This is the year. Maybe there's a, a besetting sin, things that just find hard. This is the year to have victory, victory in Jesus. This is the day. This is the time. Verse 23, he says, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. The closer you get to the Lord, the more marvelous you'll see. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. See, what God does is good. We see the results of sin. And sometimes people blame God for sin. Listen, he's not the author of confusion. He's not the author of sin. What God does is good. Romans 8, he said, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them for the called according to him. He can even take these bad things that are happening and, and use them for good. It's an amazing thing. But let's start in, in verse 1. I'll read verses 1 through 4. The theme of this chapter is God's mercy. Verses 1 through 4, you see his mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. You think the Bible wants us to understand that his mercy endures forever? <laughs> I think it does. Uh, God's mercy you know, what a blessing it is to know that God is merciful. You think about mercy. It's, it's not something we deserve or earn. You can't say, you owe me mercy. No, mercy comes from the giver. And it says, all right, I'll withhold the judgment you deserve. That's mercy. The Bible says we need to give thanks. We have much to be thankful for, but especially for his mercy. I mean, if, if the truth were known... One of us deserve to be in hell right now. Not just someday, right now. Because we've sinned. We've sinned before God. We deserve His judgment. But God has shown us mercy. Oftentimes the word long-suffering is, is attached to it. God suffers long. His, time. His mercy. And the Bible says here in verse 1, He is good. That's the reason He shows mercy. Aren't you glad we don't have to try and appease God like the fault of God's? All these false gods that they have, they're always trying to make them happy, you know. Listen, uh, our God doesn't change. He's always the same. What a blessing is that he's always good. God never gets up and has a bad day. I do. And if you're honest, so do you. <laughs> There's just some days that are harder than others. Not for God. God loves us the same every day. The psalmist said in Psalm 33, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. We, we see so much of the sin that we forget about the goodness of the Lord. That same fire that hurts people is what we cook our meals with. You know? See the goodness of the Lord. Psalm 34, he says, Oh, taste and see. And there's a, there's a word he uses there in, in two, verse 2, 3, and 4. Now. Let Israel now say. Look, we don't want to put this off. We don't want to do this another time. We want to do this now. <laughs> we need to take care of things now in our relationship to the Lord. Now is the time. This is the day. And if you had to find yourself in those verses, I 
believe we'd be verse 4. As far as I know, we're not Israel. We're not the house of Aaron. But we can be those that fear the Lord. Now we need to say, His mercy endureth forever. We need to ask God's mercy for Australia. You know, many of the people around us are deceived. They think there is no God, or they think that, that He's a... Oh, they just think all kinds of strange things about Him. Australia needs to fear the Lord. They need to know the Lord. We need to be praying for our country. This is exactly what they need. They need God's mercy. They, they used to be in America, many signs of it. God bless America. Somebody put it after it. Why? And they cut it up and changed it around and said, America, bless God. The same is true for Australia. Why should God bless us? Well, he does because he's good. We need to bless the Lord. So we see God's mercy. But in the next verses, we see our distress. Now, we're, we're experts on this. Let's read verse 5 through 9. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me, set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Thomas, like, like we do, he comes to the Lord and he is in distress. We've had it happen. There's just some times when you just think, Lord, Lord, help me. The Lord hears us. I found it really interesting that the, the first thing he says there is, he put me in a large place. He set me in a large place. You know, you, you think about tight spots. You think about getting in a situation, and it's like it just Remember Joseph in the Old Testament, his brothers wanted to kill him, and then they, they put him in a pit. He was in a, a tight spot. But you know, because he knew the Lord, he was in a large place. God took him, and man, he ended up a slave, he ended up a prisoner, but then he ended up prime minister of Egypt. Powerful nation in the world. You see, we have a great God. We have a large God. God has the universe at his disposal. You need to realize, when you call out to God, if you know Christ is your Savior, you have a large space that you occupy. You're in the Lord. He fills the universe. It has to, somewhat to do with your, your understanding of what the truth is. If you think that life is bad and everything's bad, and you, know, you'll, you'll find, you can find bad in everything. You can also see the Lord. You can see that God works. God has a, a plan with the Lord. We're not, we're not just in a tight spot. <clears throat> I heard of a lady who had, her daughter had lived with her, and um, then her daughter died, adult, adult woman. And uh, the mother was, was lonely. She'd come home, and the house was empty. And she learned to say, Jesus, I know you're here. You see, she, was in a, she learned to be in a large place. She'd lay in bed, Jesus, I know you're here. And she'd speak to him, and she'd share her, her heart with him. You know, loneliness for a Christian really is a person who hasn't learned to say. When you know the Lord, you're in a large place. I love that, that expression. It spoke to me. And then he says, he's on my side. You know, that's important. God's on your side. Now, we're not picking teams here. But you just need to understand, when you trust the Lord, He's on your side. He's not against you. He takes my part, verse 7. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. My understanding of that verse would be that, you know, sometimes there's, sometimes there's people that help us. The Lord's doing the same thing. Now, the people we can see, the them, you know, we can see them. We don't always see the Lord, but the Lord is always there. People may not always be there. Earthly friends may prove untrue, as we sang this morning. But Jesus never fails. He's always taking my part. And he's the best. I'm amazed how often people look to the government to answer their problems. I guarantee you, 
fires and things going on, one of the main things people are saying, we need to spend more money. The government needs to spend more money. That was thoughtful. Uh, you know, how, how, can, how can we help ourselves if we won't go to the Lord? He's the best. He's, it's better to trust Him than to put confidence in man. Better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in princes. We see our distress, but we can take it to the Lord. In verse uh, 10 through 13, we see our enemies. You read that. All nations compassed me about. And, and let me say, a lot of these relate to actual physical fighting. They, they had battles. Hopefully that's not going to be our situation. But all nations compass me about. But in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They compassed me about. Yea, they compassed me about. But in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They compassed me about like bees. Quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. There are enemies. There are, there are situations. There's things that afflict us. Different ones for different people. I'm finding, as I grow older, there's different enemies than they were younger. There's sometimes just situations that, that, that are tough. You know, you've been there with... with You've, you've had the, the difficulties of life seem to surround you. And like, said like bees. Uh, my dad used to raise bees. I can tell you, you don't want to be surrounded by bees. <laughs> you can only swat so many at a time. Uh, and sometimes our problems seem like that. They just seem like they're, they're surrounding us. And Satan's purpose is there in verse 13. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall. Satan wants us to fall. Just to concentrate on, on our problem. That, that verse ends, but the Lord help me. In, uh, Psalm 37, verse 24, is talking about the good man, the, the person who trusts the Lord. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. We're going to have trouble. I guarantee it. But the Lord is on our side. The Lord has a good purpose. He'll put you in a large place. He's able to bless you. He has a good purpose. And that's what we see there in verse 13 and following. The Lord help me. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the right hand. The right hand of the Lord doth, valiant, doth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Our help is the Lord. God has a, a good purpose. He, he is our strength. The Bible talks here about his right hand. It's just talking about his strength and his, his work uh, in our lives. There's so many times when uh, the Bible talks about this, but you've experienced it. The strength of the Lord. Psalm 46, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help. I think that's a real key thought. God is, is there. God is there. He, he's, he's present tense. He's the great I am. Philippians 4.13, the Bible tells us, I can do all things through Christ. He's our strength. He's our song. You know, as Christians, we don't just have songs when things are good. We have songs in the night. We have songs of deliverance. We have songs of praise. Any time, any place. We can have a song in our heart because it's the Holy Spirit that works that. I will sing unto the Lord. For he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider thrown into the sea. That's what Israel sang when Egypt had been chasing them and, and God closed the, the Red Sea on them. Sing unto the Lord. He's my strength. He's my song. He's my salvation. Our hope for eternity is that we've trusted Christ. Phrase made me think of Romans 8 when he talks about all the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be. Listen, we're going we're to pass through the valley of the shadow of death, but we're coming out on the other side. He goes with us right through it. He's our strength, He's our song, He's our salvation. And Romans 8 ends with Who shall separate or what? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? This, all these things, nothing can separate us. Second Corinthians, he encourages us. 
Don't faint. Troubles are going to come, but don't faint. Therefore, having this ministry as we've received mercy, we faint. don't give up. Don't just focus on, on the enclosure. Focus on the enlargement, on the Lord. Well, he, he comes in chapter 118 and verse 18 and following some conclusions. Verse 18, he says, The Lord hath chastened me sore, but hath not given me over unto death. God wanted to kill us. He could kill us. He could turn loose our cells and molecules and we'd just disappear. Now, someday that's going to happen to our, to our earth. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he's not given me over to death. See, we started with verses 23 and 24. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. See, God is doing a good work. The work that he's doing in you, the work that he's doing in us, he's doing a good work. We need to understand that. Now, how is he doing it? My Bible, between verse 18 and verse 23 and 24 are some more verses. Verse 19, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them. I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is do you remember Jesus quoting that, that verse in his life? And you know who he, who he was referring to? Himself. See, the, the way God helps us is through Jesus. He's uh, the gate he's talking about, the gate of the Lord. He's the stone that the builders rejected. That's Jesus. And he's giving you over to life. Jesus' purpose in you is that you live, that you really live. He, he calls it abundant life. God doesn't want you just to exist. He wants you to, to, to really live. And he wants you to live for eternity. He wants you to be in a large place. He doesn't want you to be in a little place. You know, Christians should be some of the biggest thinkers in the world. And they are. Look back at the, the founders and fathers of science, all those things. They were, they were Bible believers. I, Isaac Newton wrote, he's the one that discovered gravity. For that, nobody knew. Anyway, he wrote more about the Bible than he did about science. Great mathematician, he wrote, he, he wrote the, the book that's considered the defining uh, book about certain areas of mathematics. Believed in God. Rightly so. Folks, it's through Jesus that we have help. Verse 25 there of, of Psalm 118 is what it brings us to. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee. Then now prosper. Lord, bless me. Comes just like John 3.16 says, God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God came to give us life. God is full of mercy. He, he, he says to Israel, Live. You know, there's just some amazing pictures in Jeremiah and so on where they're, they're in their, I won't try and describe it, their blood and their guts. And God says, Live. Live. And that's God's attitude toward us. He's not trying to destroy us. He's not trying to hurt us. He wants us to live. God wants us to experience his mercy. I find it interesting that God uses what the world throws away. The stone that the builders rejected. Verse, uh, verse 22 there. 1 Corinthians, he says, We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block. You know, to some people, Christ is just, oh, get him out of the way. To the Greeks, foolishness. That, that's science, so-called. Uh, oh, that's, that's just foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. You know, there, there's people who say, oh, poor me, all I've got is God. Listen, if all you've got is God, you have more than enough. You have more than enough. Uh, to many in the world, Jesus is just a swear word. Now, I'm told that even in places where they don't know who Jesus is, they use his name as a swear word. Isn't that amazing? There's more to it than, than just uh, language. Verse 26, the Bible says, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We've blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord which has showed us life. 
Bind the sacrifice with cords, even under the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, I will praise thee. Thou art my God, and I will exalt thee. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. This is talking about our Savior. Lord Jesus. Verse 26, he, he that cometh in the name of the Lord, that's Jesus. Verse 27, God is the Lord with it, has showed us light. He said, I'm the light. He's given us hope. God has given us mercy. Our response needs to be, thou art my God. I hope that's true. I hope you've come to God his way. Through good works, that's that's pride, not through religion. Your personal faith in God through Jesus Christ. Have you come to God through Jesus Christ? For that's what we need. Saying this morning, our sins there are many. His mercy is more. That's glad. In Ephesians, he says, God, who is rich in mercy, His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we are dead. What a, what a wonderful God we have. Rich in mercy. Mercy is basically kindness. There in, in Ephesians, he, he talks about how he's, he's going to show his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Mercy. Psalm 118, 29, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy forever. God extends his mercy to you. God extends his mercy to me. He does it through Jesus. We deserve judgment. Hear people say, "Oh, that's not fair." Listen, I don't want fair. <laughs> I, want I don't I want justice. Quite frankly, I want mercy. <laughs> I know God is a just God, and He will He will do what's right. You know, the Bible says we can we can have mercy today. Titus three, He says, "It's not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to His mercy." What a blessing it is that you can come to the Lord and receive mercy. You know, as, as a Christian, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, let me encourage you in this as well. As you've received it, give it to others. Show mercy to others. Ephesians 4.32, Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Because his mercy is forever. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Maybe you've realized that you need to have mercy. Trust Christ. Maybe as a Christian you've realized how much, what a blessing it is that God has shown you his mercy. Father, thank you so much. We don't understand all these words. Oh, we know that that's not fair. Thank you that you give us. Father, I pray if there is anyone here this morning who needs saved. Lord, as Christians, help us to show mercy to others. Bless us. Give us a great heart. Help us to reach people for you. Father, we... Uh, Live in a wicked world. You've loved us. Help us to receive it and to share it with